President Biden is now calling to increase production because of volatile gas prices. It's an amazing thing to me. Yes, gas has gone up. The CEOs are making a fortune. And so let's drill, baby, drill. Let's drill on 23 million pristine acre preserve in Alaska. Let's give ConocoPhillips the go ahead for this Willow project to continue drilling. Welcome to another Climate Emergency Forum. We're glad to have you with us as we discuss pumping up the carbon. You remember that old song from the 90s, pumping up the jams? Well, it's half as fun and twice as bad. We're talking about Willow. That is the Willow Project in Alaska. And what is it we're going to be talking about? We're going to be talking about betrayal, backing out on promises, people who we thought were for the planet, but were really for profit all along. It's just hard to understand. I'm coming at this from a perspective of an American who believed a president who was running for office, who said that he was gonna be the green candidate. And really, if you're for the planet, there was no choice because as we know, President Trump took us out of the Paris Climate Accord so Biden was the guy. He was the guy. He was actually, he ran on the whole notion of moving us away from fossil fuels. I remember, and you made well too, at the beginning of the pandemic, when everyone was staying home, a lot of the mainstream media, they had images of downtowns and cities throughout the world that were just empty. And people were talking about this new era of clean air, of bringing down the carbon in the atmosphere, and changing our ways. This did not come to fruition. And now, because of this outrageous war, this, I dare say, proxy war that America and the West is fighting in Eastern Europe, that is Ukraine, we have this battle cry for more oil, more fuel, more coal all over the world. And I am going to say Willow. That's the Willow Project in Alaska. This is the project that President Biden is behind, and that will include an $8 billion oil drilling project in the North Slope of Alaska. President Biden is now calling to increase production because of volatile gas prices. It's an amazing thing to me. Yes, gas has gone up. The CEOs are making a fortune. And so let's drill, baby, drill. Let's drill on 23 million pristine acre preserve in Alaska. Let's give ConocoPhillips the go ahead for this Willow project to continue drilling. And this project, it's expected to pump out 600 million barrels of oil over the next 30 years. And in turn, that will pump up 280 million metric tons of carbon emissions into the atmosphere. So we're in a time when we're supposed to be drawing down carbon out of the atmosphere. And instead, we're putting more and more in as if there's a, no one in sight, no harm, no foul, nothing to worry about, nothing to see here. I have to say that being an American, it breaks my heart because I know that we're 4% of the population, but we're the second largest emitter on the planet behind China. So it's one country after another. And I'm looking forward to hearing what countries, Peter and Paul, that you'll be talking about and what they're doing to our lovely planet. So I'm going to turn it over now to Peter. So thank you, Regina. Yeah, that is indeed um, another dose of the most terrible news. And as the years roll on, news about climate change, I'm afraid, just gets just gets worse and worse. I checked today with the uh, U.S. Energy Information Administration, and they're very reliable on their um, emissions and atmospheric CO2 concentrations. And the United States crude oil 
production is on an increasing, rapidly increasing trend again. There was a big COVID dip, but the governments uh, handed out a great largesse of fossil fuel subsidies, and the banks poured mon more money into the fossil fuel corporations. And the fossil fuel corporation made a uh, windfall uh, record amount of profit, which one could definitely call a killing profit. So there's tons of money around for the banks and the corporations to extract more and more and more oil. And they're doing so, and all the governments are allowing them to do so. They're all sort of about the same. You know, they say, well, we may, we may not uh, okay this one. We may do a little bit of stuff here. But the fact of the matter is, as the IPCC has made very clear, we cannot... We cannot extract any more carbon from the ground. What happened to keep it in the ground? Not a whole lot. As well as the production, um, the consumption of fossil fuels, oil and gas in the United States, that's also, that's also on a rapid increase. Now, the big worst news on the fossil fuel world situation is that China is yet again building, constructing two new coal fire plants every week. So China's now doing what it was doing back in uh, 2015, and it's building as many, adding as many coal plants as it possibly can. The reason for this was given by President Xi, as uh, he had no alternative, because the number one priority for China is energy security, and I joke not, he actually said that because of last year's unprecedented heat and drought in China, he has to um, pour more and more and more carbon into the atmosphere and into the air because um, burning fossil fuels cause causes terrible air pollution. And that's killing at least 10 million people a year. And in addition, pouring more and more and more uh, CO2 into the atmosphere is killing more and more people into the future. It is making the life of all today's children in the world more and more and more harsh and hostile. I don't know whether they realize that this is the inevitable result of what they're doing, but there's no question it is. So the information um, on China I got from GEM, the Global Energy Monitor. And by the way, China is also accelerating it's uh, coal mining. So China m mines more coal than any other nation in the world by far, and is now mining more and more so that it can burn more and more. Now, I apologize to the people of China because I'm not really talking about China. I'm talking about the world economy here. It's the world economy and how the world economy works or doesn't work for the future, which is the reason why we are seeing more and more and more of these um, catastrophic, as they all are, each one of these extra fossil fuel projects is a catastrophic project. I have called it the crime of all time and also manifestly the worst evil ever. We're ruining the world. We're ruining the future. And our governments, complicit, you know, they gave out more subsidies uh, last year than ever. Our governments complicit with the fossil fuel corporations and the big banks are wrecking our planet, ruining our future in order to make fossil fuel money. Thank you so much. I, I want to thank you, Peter, for reminding us once again, because this is all so much to take in. We all have jobs. We all have friends and family to keep up with. It's hard to remember that you are correct I believe it's even the world health organization admits that eight to ten million people every year die because of burning of fossil fuel it's killing people for profits and to what end it is of no benefit to the planet or anyone on it so uh with that i will turn it over to paul thank you regina and uh peter the uh, north slope of Alaska, where the Willow Project is going to be put in, 
is one of the largest remaining pristine areas in the USA. In fact, it's 23 million acres in area. It's 200 miles north of the Arctic Circle. So this project represents an expansion of drilling into the Arctic. And uh, there's no roads in the region right now. So it's not just the drilling. They're going to have to build a whole infrastructure of roads. It's on permafrost, a lot of permafrost in that region. So to support the drilling rig, they're going to use a technique known as thermosiphoning, where they extract heat from the ground so that the permafrost underneath by the drill sites stays frozen so that the drill rigs don't topple over, things like that. So it's in a very delicate, pristine area. This project is basically a carbon bomb. As Peter was talking about, U.S. oil production has hit record levels. It had an initial peak in the 70s, then its production dropped. And then in the last number of years, because of tight oil, it's gone up significantly, in fact, to set a new record. Now, tight oil is oil that is pulled out you know, we know about fracking, pulling out natural gas. Well, there's also oil within the rock, so you can get both. Tight oil is the oil that is in, that is very difficult to get. You have to blow apart the, the rock and force it out with high pressure. A mining site for tight oil produces only for two or three years, and then you have to go somewhere else and drill another hole. So you basically leave the landscape perforated like Swiss cheese to extract the tight oil. We discussed uh, Nate Hagen's idea of society as the super organism. We did a video on that. I will reiterate a key point, which I discussed at that time. One barrel of oil is the equivalent energy-wise to about 1,400 kilowatt hours. One human working manual labor for a day produces about 0 0.6 kilowatt hours take the ratio and assume that people could maybe work even harder, <laughs> it's about 11 years. So one human would have to do 11 years of tough manual labor in order to put out the energy equivalent of one barrel of oil. And this is why when we started mining oil, we could advance society. And it's like a cookie jar. Okay, the oil is like the cookies in the jar, and we've taken it and we've used it to push forward our societies, and the cookies are hard to get now. They're at the very bottom of the jar, and we're running out of them, but there's the externality, which means that that fossil fuel that was in the ground, all that carbon that was in the ground, is now in the atmosphere and oceans, and it's changed the chemistry of our atmosphere and oceans, and it's causing all the climate catastrophes that we're seeing. Now, Biden said during the last election to get elected, one of the promises he made to progressives and young people and people concerned about climate is no more drilling on federal lands, period. Okay, so in the past few years, under pressure from the courts and Congress, he has signed off on some limited oil and gas leases. But in the case of Willow, this is the first project he's really approving freely without the courts or Congress forcing him to do so. So that makes it even worse. He promised to pivot away from fossil fuels. This is the complete opposite. So of course we feel betrayed Young voters, climate activists, anybody that cares about the planet feels this deep sense of betrayal, and it's hitting the young people harder than anybody else. The young people, over half of them in Canada, about half feel that humanity is doomed. 37% will hesitate to have children because they don't want to bring children up into a destroyed planet. Thank you, Paul. And those are grim, grim thoughts indeed. And they don't come from nothing. And I, I myself have heard young people say these things and it's devastating. I mean, can you imagine you're growing up and you're, when you're young is the time 
when you're supposed to be, it's supposed to be a time of optimism, right? But we have a whole generation around the world. It's got to be so hard. I mean, it's hard for me to be optimistic. So I feel bad for them. I feel really, really bad for this world that they're living in. And yeah, I feel bad for all of humanity. Thank you so much for discussing the proximity of Willow to the Arctic. Uh, it just never seems to be enough in terms of oil and, and coal. And one of the things that's so frightening is that I've seen warming over my lifetime. Alaska is said to have warmed over twice as much than the rest of the United States. That's a lot. And it's predicted that during the 30 years of this Willow project, that that region will warm by four degrees Fahrenheit. Four degrees in 30 years? How is that possible? I mean, that, that's catastrophic. Now, the ice, the permafrost, as you mentioned, is already thinning faster than scientists predicted. I just read in the Washington Post today, they have some pretty good climate coverage that we may have reached a tipping point with the thinning of the ice to where it will not go back in the next 100 years to where it was, if ever, if ever. So these are dire, dire things. And of course, we all understand about feedbacks because if that ice continues to thin and to melt, we lose the albedo, which uh, reflects the heat from the earth back up to the atmosphere. So we are on a crash course towards oblivion. And you are right, Biden, Biden's a betrayer. I, I don't know how else to say it. It doesn't sound nice, but how else can you put it? Peter, what are your thoughts? Well, um, you know, a road of good intentions. I, I mean, I, I have a little bit of sympathy for President Biden because, of course, he's got that terrible, horrible criminal Republican Party to deal with, right? And uh, forever they have opposed any, any mitigation of climate change, any regulation, any policies. It's incredible how fast the production of fossil fuels has increased in just the past few years. It's truly, truly amazing. I have the website to thank for that, Our World in Data, which is really very, very good now, and it's very reliable. And so the United States is producing, is extracting the most oil and the most gas by far. There's not even another country that comes close to either of them. Russia has increased its gas extraction, despite everything. And when it comes down to coal, of course, again, China. And all of these increases, China's coal, United States natural gas, and United States oil jumped up in the past few years. It's truly, truly incredible. And that increase is a catastrophic increase with regards to the future of the planet. The International Energy Agency uh, recently, uh, this month, gave us the very grim news that fossil fuel CO2 emissions are now at a record high again. And of course, atmospheric CO2 is at a record high and it's increasing as, as fast as ever. I said many, many, many years ago, I said there is no future at all with any fossil fuels at all. And, and that's what the science says. We can't get around that. No matter, I mean, there are some great ideas, sure, but they're not going to make a dent on uh, what the fossil fuel corporations or the banks and the governments are doing because the atmospheric concentrations are so high, unprecedented, and the rate of emissions is now so high, unprecedented. So I'm afraid that when I look into the future, I, um, I feel very pessimistic. I feel very ashamed for my generation, to be frank. But what else can we do? What we're trying to do here is to tell the truth of the science, tell the truth of what is happening and hopefully maybe making some change. But basically, uh, the reasons, the drivers that are pushing the situation further and further and further over the edge. And we can only do this in the hope, right, that our governments might change in the hope that our Fossil fuel corporations might decide to be energy corporations, right? They can make good money, right? Deep geothermal energy and manufacturing uh, 
the renewable infrastructure. So we just got to hope that their conscience makes them uh, reverse it and stop murdering the future. I believe it was George Bush the first who really, really hyped up and talked up the future of energy and how these fossil fuel energies could become, in fact, as you just said, energy companies rather than using the fuel of yesterday, fossil fuel. Sad that that didn't happen. And mind you, he was a Republican. My, how things have changed, how they have changed. And as Paul mentioned, Biden is wanting to move forward with this Willow Project without the Republicans, as we know, if we know, pushing him in that direction. It seems to be nothing is unilateral, but he's not doing this perforce as we see it now. Paul, do you have any closing thoughts for us? Yes. So I said that a barrel of oil is equivalent to about 11 years manual labor from one human. So the oil that we burn each day to power society is the equivalent of having about 500 billion human slaves, oil slaves, if you like, imaginary slaves, empowering to keep, you know, the 8 billion of us going with our society. Now, our society of the 8 billion, there's about 4 billion workers who are keeping the society going and by burning the oil. Yeah, we, we simply... You know, it just shows you the harsh logic. I mean, our civilization cannot possibly continue as it is for much longer. Uh, whether people want it to or not, it just won't be energetically possible. The damage to the ecosystems is just too great. We're getting extreme weather events of all types that are hammering our infrastructure, our roads, our buildings, you know, whether it be wildfires or superstorms or what have you, heat waves, drought, you know, look around the world. It's, uh, there's climate or weather extremes and catastrophes. And these things all cost money to repair, to rebuild places. And eventually we will run out of that money to rebuild places and things that are ruined will just lie in ruins because there won't be money to rebuild. So like Peter, I have a very pessimistic view of, of the future, the way we're continuing. The hope that I see, and young people get it, they, they, they understand. The study I mentioned is of, of a thousand young people in Canada, ages 16 to 25, and I quoted a few numbers, but a study was done uh, two years in 2021, looked at 10 countries, a thousand young people in each of those 10 countries, including the UK, and the USA. And the numbers are even higher in some countries, like the poor Philippines seems to be in the crosshairs of climate catastrophe with typhoons, coastal flooding, wildfires, etc. So over 90% of the young people there say that climate change is affecting them day to day. The numbers of people that don't want to have children of that age group or that would hesitate having children is is over 50% there. It's more like a third, just over a third in Canada and say the US, but it's it's 50% there. And they think, you know, the number of people that think humanity is doomed is up to like, what, 70% or something in countries like the Philippines and, and India also. So it's very interesting studies. And, you know, what I... I don't see the fossil fuel companies changing, really. The super organism is going to collapse and that will force a change in society. You know, I don't think it's going to end pleasantly. I think it's going to end in a, a very abrupt catastrophe to society. And then we'll see what emerges coming from the, the other side. Unless we put huge amounts of money to try to extract CO2 and methane from the, the atmosphere. And unless we try to cool the planet to buy us some time to do these things, you know, I'm talking about solar radiation management and carbon dioxide removal, but even lots of people are against those sort of things saying we can make it worse. Well, what is worse than a complete collapse? But anyway, those are controversial things still. But uh, yeah, we're just heading in the wrong direction. When you're heading in the wrong direction and don't change course, you actually reach what you're heading for, which is not pleasant for, for humanity. Well, on that bright note, yes. You know, I, we'd all like to say the future's bright. 
We could be like those of faith and pray for a miracle and expect it'll happen. I think Peter said it best. What can we do? We have to do something. And that's why we're here talking with you. And that's why you're where you are listening to us. And in that way, we're conversing about this very, very important issue of our time. And that's why I want to thank you, really, for all of us, for you joining us here at the Climate Emergency Forum. We do our best to bring you topical and interesting educational climate news every week. And it means a lot to us, for those of you who regularly follow in. If you learned something, please share this video, like, subscribe, and leave us your comments down below. We'd like to hear what your thoughts are. What do you think in terms of fossil fuel extraction? Are we doomed? Is this just something that we're going to be doing for the next few years before we pivot to cleaner energy? What are your thoughts? Please share them with us, and we'll look forward to seeing you again at the next Climate Emergency Forum. <music>